Thanks to Kara for sponsoring today's video. So hello everyone. It's been a while, I know, but I've awoken from my slumber to discuss the show that is Raising Asia. Raising Asia is a dance mom spinoff starring Asia Monet Ray and her family basically trying to make her this big pop star and like Beyonce. And so, you know, this show's crazy. It got a lot of buzz at the time. I remember when it was airing and it was very controversial back then. And we're gonna discuss it today. So I hope you guys enjoy. And I'm sorry for the disappearance. Life is getting at me. I'll probably post a life update on my second channel kind of going more in depth just like where I am and kind of things like that so yeah we're gonna get into it first I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor which is Care Of. So spring has finally arrived and if you're looking to renew your daily routine Care Of can help with their personalized supplement service. So as someone who's always on the go I've been relying on the multivitamin iron and rhodiola supplements to keep me energized and productive throughout the day. So as a UX designer and content creator, my days are packed with meetings, design projects, and working on content. But with Care Of, I no longer feel drained and tired by the mid-afternoon. I can work on my designs and videos for a longer period of time without experiencing such drained energy by the end of the day, and even have enough energy to attend social outings in the evening. So one of my favorite things, again, about Care Of's website is their personalized quiz that takes into account your specific dietary needs. Their website's user interface and user experience is top notch, making it easy to take the quiz and explore their selection of supplements. So I really trust Carol because their ingredients are backed by research and I really feel like they've been working for me and just making me more energized and motivated throughout the day. So take their quiz to discover what's recommended for you and use my code BWATSING50 for 50% off your first order. So yes, y'all, spring into action with Carov. So thank you, Carov, so much for sponsoring today's video and let's get into Raising Asia. Okay, y'all, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the episodes. So I watched each episode. Yes, I watched all 13 episodes and I took notes on kind of the most, you know, the most biggest plot points and things that really stuck out to me. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of go through episode by episode and give my thoughts on this show, on Asia's upbringing that was shown to us and all the drama. So, all right, so this is gonna be part one of Raising Asia series. It's only gonna be about two videos, but these episodes are really thorough and I just wanna make sure that I discuss each point and that you guys can really follow along, especially if you didn't watch the show. And if you did watch the show, you can feel like I'm recapping it. Also, like I said, I don't wanna be too long-winded. So yeah, this is gonna be part one and then part two will be out next week. I really hope you guys enjoy this first part and let's get into it. So episode one of Raising Asia basically starts with introducing us to the Ray family. So we have Sean Ray, which is Asia's father, Christy Ray, which we all know is Asia's mother. We also have Asia's sister, Bella. And then we eventually meet Asia's grandmother and Asia's aunt, who is Christy's sister. So basically in this first episode, they're preparing for the World of Dance show. And I actually used to watch World of Dance a lot um, back in like 2014. I used to watch Kidda the Great, if any of y'all remember Kidda, like I used to watch him a lot on that. So I was like, oh, okay, World of Dance. But immediately we see that she's going through a lot of pressure and it's just pretty dramatic. So Asia remarks that she never really has time for family, like there's never really time for any family engagements because she's always working. And throughout this episode, we see that she is actually presented with the dancers that she's going to be dancing with in World of Dance. And so it's six men and she's ch checking out their six packs which is really wild. Like she's literally out here saying like, oh, are you, are you, uh, you know, uh, fit enough for me and blah, blah, blah. And it's just really weird having an eight year old checking out these dudes, uh, chests and their stomachs and all of that. I just think it's really inappropriate for an eight year old kid. It's just weird. Um, I never, I didn't understand why that was even like necessary to put in. It's like, I get it that Asia for a young kid was very smart, savvy, and passionate about her craft, but that was just, crossing the line. She also mentioned that pop stars don't go to the park because she wanted to go to the park, but basically, you know, her dad is saying like, look, pop stars like you trying to be Beyonce, you don't go to the park. And so Asia's basically echoing that in her interview. She has something every day. He still doesn't get how busy I am. Pop stars do not go to the park. Their playground is the red carpet. So you can tell she's been conditioned to think that her lifestyle is not conducive to fun and enjoyment and being a kid. Basically, we can leave being a kid behind because I have a bigger goal that I want to accomplish. Asia then starts kind of commenting on the pressure to be perfect and this need to be like this amazing, you know, perfect cookie cutter dancer all the time and that she has to 
hit everything perfectly and then Christy is really starting to stress and really starting to get all antsy and that stresses Asia out and that's a common theme throughout the show that every time Christy stresses it stresses Asia out. I think Christy's just scared of Asia not succeeding. Asia feels that stress and as a performer it's not good when you can feel someone else's tension someone else's stress because it makes you a little less secure. There's then a point in the episode where Christy's literally freaking out about the state of the house. She's freaking out that her house looks a mess and that, oh, she has to cover certain things. I guess, you know, um, you know how like in shows where you have to cover like logos or you have to cover um, like, for example, Coca-Cola, if you're not sponsored by them, you have to cover them up, da, da 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 She's basically freaking out about that and throwing a whole fit about it. And I can understand not wanting to get on national TV with your house looking crazy, but she was out here going nuts. Like she was screaming at everybody. She was going like, we gotta fix this, we gotta change this, da 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 da, -da. Like this looks like crap, da 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 And Asia's trying to, I think she's trying to stretch in the room and they're trying to film a scene, but Christy's like, nah. Things are all crooked. I just feel that things are not in control. Instead of just filming a show, you know, and making a great show. I have to worry about all this other stuff. We can't shoot in here like this. It, it looks, how do you shoot a TV show like that? That looks horrible. All of a sudden, you'll never see it. But people do. People do when they want. See for sure. I, but I this is like ridiculous. I don't want my house to always look like crap because something has to be covered. It's like, I'm taking the black things off, okay? Just, now we're wasting time. So again, we see how like neurotic and how much of a control freak Christy is just in the first episode with the way the house is. And she continuously breaks the fourth wall throughout this season of, of the show. There's only one season, but she constantly breaks the fourth wall because of things she just doesn't like production doing. You know, it's weird because at the time watching Dance Moms, you never saw them break the fourth wall that much in the show and i think that was like a thing that a lot of the cast members of that show were like yo we can't break the fourth wall we kind of have to modify what we argue about what we talk about to accommodate for that but in this show all they do is break the fourth wall so i so then we get to world of dance asia's performance where she's going to be performing this really risque dance with these dancers and she's basically a lion tamer and she has a whip and World of Dance, like the actual organization, the people running the show, were not comfortable with her dancing with a whip, the cage, all the suggestiveness, as they shouldn't be. Like, they were being real adults. They were like, yo, this is too much for an eight-year-old child to be throwing a whip at these men. Like, what, like, what? I wouldn't even be comfortable doing all that. And she was eight years old, just going like, yo, like, and she was like, how can we do the dance without the whip? And I'm just like, girl. So they think that the whip is too suggestive, but Asia and the rest of them, Anthony is like, no, we have to use this whip. Like it's part of the routine. It has to be used. This is not okay. I'm not gonna allow this. Can you step over here? It's complaining that Asia's routine is a little bit suggestive. It's who Asia is. You, know, you can't give her no itty bitty bibbity bobbity dance routine. And then the whip is too much that we need to make adjustments or they will pull the number. I want to perform. She doesn't want to give up the whip. Well, that's basically the whole part. How do you, how do you tame lions with no whip? Do you're just going to let them bite your hand? What do you think? It's not necessary. Are you losing the whip or no? We're going to do this dance because I'm not backing down on this. I'm not losing the whip. So end of conversation. We then get introduced to Asia's manager, which is Billy Huffsey. And I'm just gonna say right now, I thought Billy was really weird. I just didn't like his, the way he, I don't wanna be judgmental just off of someone's looks. He just really like put me off. Like he was weird and he was all like, I wanna market Asia as an eight year old, which I agreed with him on that. I agreed that he wanted to market Asia as like a Disney princess, as like a kid because she was a kid, you know? And he was like, she'll probably have more fun being marketed like this anyway. And so that was really where we see kind of the introduction of Anthony, the choreographer, and Billy's tiff is that a Anthony feels like Asia should be marketed as like the next Beyonce, whereas Billy feels like she needs to be a child. She needs to be marketed like a child. Towards the end of the episode, he basically comes after Sean and says, I see Asia more than her dad does. I get what Anthony is doing. I get it. But I just thought, you know, the whip and the costume it was a little too mature. I've been in show business a long time, so I'm coming with a lot of experience, and I'm the manager. I see her more than her dad. And I don't know where he got that from, but he better not get it twisted again down the road, because that's my daughter, not his. So that really bothered me. And you know, this, I was watching this show like brand new, like I was going into it brand new, because I hadn't seen the show in years. 
And I remember being so upset because I was like, how disrespectful is that? I see her more than her dad. Even if that's true, that's not what you say to the father. It was just really disrespectful. I feel like the way he said it sounded hypocritical because then Sean gets more involved later on, as I'm going to discuss in a few minutes. Like, Sean gets more involved as the show goes on and he's upset that Sean's getting more involved in the beginning. And it's like, yo, you were literally coming at him for... Okay, so we get into episode two and the biggest theme of this episode is that Sean wants to take a more active role in Asia's life. Sean wants to get a better understanding of what, you know, Asia's doing, the kind of contracts that Christy signed on Asia's behalf, and he just wants to take a more active role. Sean then has a meeting with Billy and Billy just gets super defensive and that really bothered me this meeting because Sean is just trying to say like, hey, I just want to understand what's being signed, like what's being discussed, I'm her father. And then Billy's like, well, we already signed a contract, ask Christy. He's basically all like, oh, ask Christy what they did, da 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 da, like ask Christy what we did. Like he's getting really defensive and I'm just like, that's her father, okay? Like this is her father. So he has every right to know what's happening, even if he wasn't initially involved in the initial business conversations, that's her dad. So you need to have respect. So I just, I was really annoyed at the way he was coming at Sean. And it was just weird. It's like, do you, do you see the fact that you had to say in the first episode that, oh, I see her more than her dad. You're out here like basically saying like, oh, she's basically like my kid. I know that's not what he was saying, but that's kind of what it implies where it's like, I'm basically more of a father to her than her own father is. And now that the father wants to get more involved, you're threatened by that? Hmm, okay. You're the manager. I don't know if you're managing her acting. I don't know if you're just managing the singing, auditions, and all of those types of things because I haven't gotten anything in writing. I haven't seen anything. Well, then you need to talk to your wife because we have a contract. Well, I haven't seen the contract. Well, then she has. Well, I need to see it. Well, then you need to talk to her. What is he trying to hide? Why is he getting so defensive? I'm only asking a question. You need to understand that above all of this, Mm -hmm. My family comes first, and anybody that messes with my family messes with me, and the last thing you want to do is be on the wrong side of that. I don't like that. That's Billy then acts like he made Asia who she is, which also really annoyed me because we had never heard of Billy till Raising Asia, and Asia was amazing as a six-year-old, so to try to act as if he's the reason why Asia's the way she is is just really, like, messed up to me. Like, I don't know. I just found it really, really tacky and just, again, weird. It's like... You feel like you made this child. You feel like you have ownership over this child. Nah, not nah, fam. No, we're not. We're not going there. We then get into a part of the episode where Asia doesn't want to wear an exercise outfit because it's too small. Then Christy freaks out by saying she's not going to film until Asia starts listening. I don't want to wear that. I'm not. I'm not playing. I don't want to wear that. No, I'm not playing, Asia. I don't want to wear go, that. Go put that on now. Oh, wait, that's my phone. I'm going to shut down the show in oh, a second. Too tight. Look You're just doing conditioning. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film until she starts listening. Sean, you better go talk to your daughter. I'm not filming anymore until she starts listening. If you were on an audition and they said put this on and it's two sizes too small, what do you do? Say the word. Improv. Okay. Improv. Make it fit. That's what she's expecting from you. Okay, what's one scene with that on? Christy. Okay? Christy. Be mindful. So I said Be it was off. Mindful. She came down, she went upstairs and she stretched that thing from here to eternity to fit so she can please you, okay? The damn thing doesn't fit. You're wrapped so damn tight, you don't hear what anybody says. You know, we shouldn't have to go through this crap every time just to get to you, to where you're happy, okay? So this scene also, it just shows like Christy's control freak nature because it's like, this is literally an outfit that I can't imagine. I was the type of kid that if I was wearing something too small or too big on me, it made me really upset. Like you're not comfortable. And if you have to dance in something that's too tight for you, that is really, and you're just a kid. Sometimes you do have to suck it up, I would assume so, but like, she's just a kid. And the way Christy was like, I'm not gonna film till she starts listening. It's like, you're stressing her out so much over an outfit. It's like, why are you being so controlling? Why can't you just get her another outfit? Like, I'm sure she has a million different dance outfits. You can't just pull one from her, her drawer or her closet and be like, hey, just wear this one. Or I guess like you couldn't allow Asia to just go get a new one. Like, I don't know why she was so stringent on that one and then made it seem like Asia was the problem. I just don't get that. And then Sean had to basically calm Christy down. He basically had to be like, yo, look, like she's trying so hard to make you happy. She's trying to make this work for you. So you need to have a little more grace and calm the frick down, <laughs> you know? So um, I did appreciate that. It seems like Sean really likes or knows how to bring Christy down to earth. 
but it still was just way too much for an eight-year-old kid. And then Asia and Billy start practicing Asia's public speaking for a performance she has. So in this performance, she's performing and she's also gonna be presenting an award, so they're practicing that. And it basically gets into Christy really likes Billy and really enjoys Billy as Asia's manager, but Sean isn't really sold on him yet. And so there's kind of a disagreement with that. And then we get to like the performance where Asia's going to be dancing and Christy has a problem with the stage. She complains that it's way too small. She complains that it's really, really ridiculous. So basically that's that. So Asia does end up performing at the reality TV awards because they feel like this is a really good opportunity. They can't pass on it. And basically that's kind of how that episode ends. By the way, her dance, again, super fierce and just, they really had Asia just dancing so maturely and they were really, Anthony was really pushing this Beyonce narrative on Asia and it's just, it's weird, but we're gonna get more into that later. So then episode three, Asia has a break from performances for a week. So she's not performing, she's not really rehearsing for any big performance and she wants to go to the park or play outside, but she can't. And then we have Asia's aunt Gina basically come into the picture and basically tell Christy that she feels that she's spreading herself way too thin and that she's stressing herself out too much and that she wants Sean to be more involved. But this week we have a break on performances. Yay! Do you think me and Bella can go to the park today? There's just not time for a day off. We don't get your schoolwork done. We can't go out. Slow down. Don't go in the street. Asia can't do stuff with me because she's always dancing. Sometimes I'm jealous of Bella. She has the easy life. Me, I have the hard life because I work hard for it. There's then a part in the episode where Asia and Bella are making this dance together. Like they're just having fun and they want to show their mom this dance that they made. But then Christy freaks out because I guess they don't have the licensing to the song to use it in the show. And so Christy freaks out saying like, you know that she's not supposed to be performing that. And she has this whole fit over it. We made a dance for you. Look at ready. Oh, yeah. What would I do? What would I do? Wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? We're doing a dance for you. Am I supposed to hear that song? Oh, never mind. Asia, you know better than that. This is unacceptable. You don't do music unless she's with Billy or myself. Again, every disagreement Christy really exaggerates and blows out of proportion. Like she makes everything that's not working perfectly and she completely exacerbates it into this literal like insane dispute every time and i'm like of course asia is stressed out all the time like someone who's constantly overblowing everything that's just that's too much stress to be living with i'm sorry like i can't be dealing with someone who does all that not all day like life is already too stressful we don't need somebody overblowing everything i've known people like that in my life and i don't talk to those people anymore <laughs> There then we then get to a part in the episode where Asia's working on homework and Christy's trying to help Asia with her multiplication, but she's losing patience with Asia, basically getting frustrated that she doesn't know the work or that she she takes a little longer to process it. And I think Asia had to count on her fingers and she was getting angry at Asia for that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, war flashbacks for me because my mom used to literally go insane on me if I didn't understand math. Like I remember math was such, I think I had math anxiety. I don't like to throw around anxiety like, oh, I have anxiety. No, I don't like, cause I don't have anxiety. So I'm not gonna, you know, claim that. But like, I really was terrible at math. Like, and watching Christy get so frustrated in Asia over math just took me back to my, my, my youth when my mom and my brother used to go crazy on me. So I felt for her in that moment. <laughs> Six times eight. Okay, so what's six times five? I'm not so sure about this mommy teaching me thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. You need to get your flashcards. You should be beyond making tallies. My phone has a calculator, mom. I don't need math. You can't sit here and take that long to do four problems. You need to tell me why you're having this problem. Well, first of all, you're talking. Then Christy's mom basically steps in and says that she feels that Christy has tunnel vision when it comes to Asia, that Christy's so focused on Asia that she kind of just disregards everybody else in the family. So again, we have people like Gina, like the grandmother who are trying to kind of bring Christy back to earth and help her remember that, you know what, we get that you have this dream and that your daughter has this dream, but you also have other family that you need to account for and attend to. So yeah. Good yeah. job has been the girls since birth. Well, I think it's Asia. Christy has tunnel vision when it comes to Asia's career. 
Asia then goes to rehearsal with Eric Serap Serapin, which is concerning because if y'all don't know, this guy was charged with sexual assault or something of other uh, other dancers. So the fact that Asia was working with him, like all the dance moms girls worked with him and I'm just like, I think all of them did. And that's just like, yo, it's just weird. It's just creepy to see that on screen and like knowing what he ended up being busted for is really disturbing. A lot of things in this show are disturbing. And towards the end of the episode, Gina and Nana try to talk to Christy and they want Christy to soften. They want Christy to be who she used to be before all of this crazy stuff with Asia's career. So they were really imploring her like, hey, you need to calm down. You need to take a break. Like you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Like you need to chill. And she's, Christy's just like, yeah, whatever. Like da da da. So yeah, that's basically how that episode ends with that conversation, so. That was episode three. Episode four kind of begins with Christy really being focused on Billy, really liking Billy's um, help and managing how he's managing Asia's career. So again, we kind of see this like different, this separation where Christy really likes Billy, but I think Sean is still warming up to Billy. We then see uh, one of Asia's instructors visits the house and brings an aerial rig for her to do like twirling and for her to do all this, this aerial work. And Bella really wants to be on the rig as well, but Christy feels like it's not safe because Bella is not a dancer. Bella is not really trained to be on that kind of stuff on the silks. And so Bella's really sad. And then Nana takes her inside to do some crafts, arts and crafts and stuff. And Christy basically continues to focus on Asia. And so, you know, that kind of, again, shows like there's that separation where Christy's so focused on Asia and Bella also wants to join in and she can't. There's like, you gotta go inside. Asia can do all of this and I don't know, it's just kind of sad seeing that from Bella, you know? You can do it right now until, until next time. I do feel bad that Bella really is looking at that aerial and wanting to get on it, but right now I don't think that's the safest place for Bella. Oh, I'm gonna do it today. Bella, do you want to do a craft? Are you sad because they made you come in? I'm never sad. You're never sad? No. I thought I saw you pouting okay, out I'm there. Sad. Okay, you're sad. Christy's aware of the time that she needs to spend with Bella. We then get into a theme that pretty much carries for the rest of the show where Anthony tries to put in his two cents. He has an idea of who he wants Asia to be. And so he tries to basically put this meeting together with this other manager to discuss Asia's career. And this is behind Christy's back. So Christy doesn't know that this manager's coming in and um, he basically is trying to get his two cents to be heard. Oh, what's going on? I actually spoke with Taylor today. And uh, she's actually in LA in North Hollywood. I won't have a meeting or look at other people in the industry. I'm confused. You confused me a lot because sometimes you said Billy's a coach, and then I don't know if he's a manager. I mean, I don't know what, what, is, what does he do? I'm really not feeling Anthony bringing up Tina again. I was very clear that I didn't want a meeting. I was very clear that I was happy with Billy. I'm not a manager. Okay, so well, let me manager. make it clear. I'm just not interested. I'm going to make this meeting happen regardless because I have Asia's best interest at heart. So Anthony feels like the song that Asia was playing or is singing is to Kitty. He feels like Asia is one of a kind and deserves more mature music, deserves music that actually exemplifies her talent and not just a Kitty dancer. So then the manager, Tina Smith, who I think has worked with Beyonce. Again, it's been a little bit since I watched these episodes, but I believe she worked with Destiny's Child. She's worked with Beyonce. She's worked with like a lot of famous artists. And she basically says that the song is really kiddie and the song isn't really professional. So he's trying to kind of convince Christy like, hey, like if you want Asia to get us to a specific level, these are not the kind of songs and dances that she needs to be doing to get to that level. Like she needs to be singing like this. And Christy's kind of like, you know, I didn't ask for your opinion. You're just my choreographer. So that happens pretty much the entire like duration of the show. Uh, you can tell that the production is something, someone that's fairly new. It's something that you would hear on a, a, a child network radio show. This whole kid show to me. That's, that's what that sounds like. You know, and I don't think Asia is that kid show. So then in episode five, Sean comes to dance rehearsal because he wants to take a more active role in Asia's life. He wants to see exactly what kind of things she's doing in her career. So he takes a more active role in rehearsal and he wants to see if Anthony's doing his job right. So then Christy yells at Asia about stretching. He, she goes on a fit about Asia stretching. And basically Anthony tells Sean that Christy stresses way too much and that stresses Asia out. So it's kind of like, okay, Christy is doing too much. So I want you to kind of see what's going on and I need you to be more aware of like, this is what's really happening when you're not around, <laughs> you know? She's a worry box. She's always constantly, what, 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 what is this? What is this? What is this? You know, and it, it, it gets a little cumbersome. Rotate, rotate, rotate. 
See how you're not rotating? No, that's not right. Yeah, it's sloppy. That energy bounces off of her and it gets onto Asia. So then Anthony says yet again that Asia shouldn't be a kid star. John tells Anthony that he needs to stay in his lane. So again, this is again what I was saying before. Anthony has a different vision for what kind of star Asia should be than Billy does. And so this is a constant back and forth battle where he wants to see Asia shine and be this Beyonce and be this big figure and everything like that. And while Anthony has a lot of that expertise and he's worked with so many professionals and I can understand where he's coming from, I think it's really frustrating because it's like, you were just hired as the choreographer. Like, again, I, I feel like I see both sides, but if it, if it were me, I would just be like, yo, she has a lot of potential, but if her parents don't want that, it's none of my business, I'm gonna get paid choreographing. So that was kind of where I got annoyed with Anthony because Anthony kept wanting to put in his two cents when no one asked for it, you know? So Sean kicks Christy out of rehearsal and right as he kicks her out of rehearsal, Asia hits her knee. And then Sean's like, man, of course, when I finally try to take over for a bit, something bad happens, just my luck. And then Christy comes in and then maniacally laughs saying that Asia can't go skate later. So this is also an episode where it's Bella's birthday and they're having a skate party. And then Christy's like, ha ha ha, you can't go skate now. And I was just kind of like, that's, that's rude. That's rude. That's rude. <laughs> Like, I was just like, why are you, why are you re regaling and relishing in your daughter not being able to have fun? Like, I'm okay. Are you okay? Let me see. Where's it hurt at? Right, right here? There. In the middle? On your shin? Or your Same knee? Right here. Oh, well, now you don't get to go to the skate party. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not going to skate? It's my sister's birthday. Do you know that skating is not something that's gonna help you be a better dancer right Look at it was just it was just really it sounded really vindictive i know i don't think she meant it that way of course but it was just stupid i was like girl chill like it was dumb i i thought it was dumb then sean ends up telling asia that she can't go skate and telling her that it's a waste of time um for bella's birthday and that she's trying to become the be the next beyonce and that it's not worth her getting hurt just because she wants to go have fun for a night or for, I guess, a day. So Bella, um, Asia gets really, really upset. Asia gets really angry because she's like, how do you feel? How do you think I feel being the big sister and I can't be there for my little sister? I'm her big sister and I can't be there for her. How does that make me feel? You know what I mean? She starts crying and really stressing. It's hard being a big sister that can't do anything with a little sister. It's hard doing that. And you know that. That's why I'm trying to prepare you right now, Asia. There's going to be a lot of things that you're not going to be able to do that your sister can. Your sister doesn't want to be the next Beyonce. And it's just, again, it's really sad because Asia's just a kid. Asia literally is a kid that wants to do kid things. She wants this career, although I think her family and her choreographer and everything, Anthony, I think they wanted it more than her. But I think it just goes to show again, like the humanity in it, where it's like, I want to be there for my sister. I want to have fun. And it just, it gives me like Michael Jackson vibes. Like remember Michael Jackson would say like, oh, I'd be at the recording studio and there was a baseball park or like there was a park across the street from me and all the kids would be playing and I'd have to be inside. Like it was giving me Michael Jackson vibes. I was like, yo, don't like, don't be Joe Jackson. We don't need another Joe Jackson. <laughs> like, uh. Then we have Asia rehearsing for Universal and then they try to make the day as fun as possible for Bella. So Asia does rehearsal, they come home and they really want Bella to have as much fun as possible. And Asia basically feels jealous of Bella because she gets whatever she wants. So I'm assuming that this is out of guilt. I'm assuming that they give Bella what she wants a lot out of guilt. Christy then gets a phone call from Ricky Palomino to have Asia perform a dance and do a little photo shoot later with him that same day. So Ricky Palomino is a very popular, really talented choreographer. And, you know, Asia was really excited. Christy was really excited, but they were feeling really bad because they were like, we're going to probably have to leave Bella's birthday early. And Christy was strongly considering doing that so again it's like the work always seemed to take precedence over family over anything that just wasn't work related and i just think that's so unhealthy like i mean it's obvious but i mean think about it work-life balance ever since the pandemic hit that's been the tone that has been echoed you know work-life balance work-life balance work-life balance you know i just think it's so unhealthy to teach an eight-year-old that hey your job takes precedence over everything else. In order to be Beyonce, you basically don't even have to have family time. But even, I mean, you even had like, I know like Tina Knowles, like I know she used to really carve out family time and she even carved out specific days for Solange so that way Solange wouldn't feel, um, you know, second to Beyonce. I feel like Tina Knowles made sure that the family was close. And so the fact that Christy was kind of just like, oh, where it comes first? It's like, how do you even expect to have a strong family unit when you're teaching your child that, nothing else matters except your work. 
How are you, what are you teaching them about their self-concept, how they feel about themselves, how they relate in the world? You know what I mean? It's like your work is everything and nothing else matters and your identity is tied to your work. Trust me, I went through that whole phase of like feeling attached to my work. I think a lot of people, especially like in college, like you tied so much of your worth to your grades or to your job or to your whatever and really having to learn like, yo, there's a whole world outside of your obligations. They then get a pink limo for Bella's birthday and um bella like is like just loving this like she's like i feel like royalty i feel amazing and then bella slaps asia and gets away with it which i little dots and one one diamond uh, that's another decision now snap out of it <laughs> you know and it goes back to a point that i wanted to say before i had to change my battery and everything like that but i think christy let bella get away with things because she felt guilty she felt bad that she couldn't be there for bella and really like support her like she needed to so she kind of just let her get away with whatever which a lot of parents i've noticed do that like a lot of parents who work a lot or a lot of parents who can't really be there for their kids they let the kids run wild because they feel bad so they're like okay well i can't be there for my kids so they can have that new that new playstation even though we don't really have money for the playstation oh i'm gonna let my kid uh harass the other kid and be disrespectful because, well, I always give the, the other kid all the attention. Christy then tells everyone that her and Asia are leaving early to everyone's dismay, of course. Sean is really upset and he says, you gotta say no, like you need to learn how to say no sometimes, like family comes first and you have to learn how to set boundaries and lay down the law and do the right thing. We're gonna have to leave early from Bella's party, okay? Okay. Okay. Why? Huh? So you're gonna miss my birthday? No. Sometimes we say no. I, I made sure I was home. <laughs> Come hell or high water, no matter what's going on, business-wise or otherwise, when we have the birthdays, they come first. We then get to the actual skate party and Asia wasn't allowed to skate with Bella. Asia had to basically stand on the sidelines. And that made me really sad again because it's like, you saw Sean and Christy skating and I get it because it's for Bella, but I'm like, maybe you do one round with Bella or two rounds and then someone should stand with Asia so she doesn't feel left out. She doesn't feel like, you know, oh, I just have to sit and watch. I mean, at least let her skate on the, on the carpet. You know, I did not know how to skate as a kid. It took me for, I still don't really know how to skate that well now, but when I was little, I would skate on the carpet. I'm like, she could at least skate on the carpet. So if she hurts herself or falls, she'll be fine. Like she'll recover, you know? So I thought that was kind of sad. I didn't like seeing her just watching on the sidelines while her whole family was out skating. It's like way to make one fe kid feel lesser than when it's ironic because they always make Asia feel more than. So in this instance, she's feeling like lesser than because she, can't do what the rest of the family's doing. However, Asia was allowed to open presents with Bella and really play with Bella. And towards the end of the episode, Christy decides to not have let Asia go to the photo shoot and the dance thing. She decides to stay for Bella's birthday. And I thought that was a great move. And I really respected Christy for that. I really appreciated that she really took that into consideration and was like, you know what? Like, this is a fun thing. This is a family thing and I want my child to enjoy herself. So episode six of Raising Asia starts with Billy being sick, so he can't make it to rehearsal, and Christy decides to kind of handle things and basically play manager. So Billy booked Asia for a performance for an upcoming artist named Dario, and I've never heard of Dario. Anthony's never heard of Dario. I haven't heard of Dario even now, so I'm guessing they never popped off. Billy gets us this gig where we're opening up for Dario, who is Dario? But yeah, she he booked a performance for her. It'll be the first time that she'll be an opening act for someone. So this is a really, I would say, triggering part of the show because this only comes up in this episode. So I mean, if you're very sensitive and about EDs and eating and just everything that has to do with like body image and eating, I would caution you for this part because Christy kind of goes crazy and asks Asia what she's eating. And she starts flipping out that Asia is eating her bread before her eggs. And then basically asking why is Asia eating yellow eggs instead of just the egg whites. And Sean says she's dancing all the time. She needs some fat in her diet to which she says fat is in peanut butter. So she, so basically Christy's freaking out about Asia's diet. And Sean's just like, she needs fat. Like she needs to have a balanced diet. Like she can't just be eating protein or whatever all the time. She needs as much as she can. What are you eating, Aisha? Um, what are stop. You eating? I'm grabbing oh. myself. What are, you, what are you eating, Aisha? I'm eating eggs, peanut butter, and banana with fruit. What's the problem? It's breakfast. I know, but she's eating her bread before eggs. You should just give her her eggs. For, and 
Why is she having yellow eggs? Because she needs to have some fat in her diet. She's exercising and dancing all day long. Well, there's fat and peanut butter. So you gave her bread, peanut butter, and banana. Christy micromanages Asia's diet because she's a control freak. She's not a bodybuilder. And you know, with your genetics, she starts eating a bunch of peanut butter, bread, and eggs at one sitting. She gets bulky, and you know that. And Christy then worries about Asia being bulky, which again is really, really sad. Cause again, she's, she's a, how many more times I gotta say she's a kid. When I was a little kid, I didn't really eat much. Like I didn't start eating until I hit puberty like that. My mom would have to like literally force feed me. <laughs> and so like, be grateful that you have a child that is eating regularly, eating how she should. She's not like averse to food or anything like that. So it's just really weird that she's putting that on an eight year old kid. Like, Oh, I don't want her to be bulky. She's eight. How's she gonna be bulky at eight? Like, bro, like, how's she gonna be super, super bulky and like all these things at eight years old? Like, she's good. And then Sean says, I don't want my kid freaking out about her body image. I'm giving her healthy food. Thing, I know it's not a big thing for you, but it's a big thing for me. I don't want her sitting there freaking out about her body image two years from now in high school or whatever, wondering what she should or shouldn't eat. I'm giving her healthy food. It's what I grew up on. Sean thinks that Christy freaking out about the food is a deeper issue and that she's freaking out about his involvement in general. She's freaking out that Sean's more involved and he's not convinced of Billy's involvement. So I think Christy's just kind of becoming a control freak and she's sort of freaking out about uh, the fact that Sean has a more of a say so now, you know, she wants more of the control. So Christy then runs Asia's performance for Dario um, and Anthony's running late. And then Christy freaks out saying that Asia's being lazy and da 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 da. Then Asia's dance shoes hurt her. So she tosses them to her mom to take them. And she accidentally throws a shoe too hard. And Christy thinks she did it on purpose. And Asia's like, no, I didn't mean to do that. That was on accident. I didn't mean to chuck it at you. And Christy's like, yeah, you meant to. We're going to talk about it in the car. And I'm just like, yo, I could, I could not stand that when it's like, it's very obvious that she was, she did that on accident. And you're making it seem like she was being belligerent. Like if she was being belligerent, I'm sure she would have, she would have said something like, oh, it just really annoyed me. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're not. I didn't mean to But we'll to talk about it in the car. I didn't mean to do that. Don't look at me. You keep looking at me after every move. Kids look at their parents for approval. Kids do it all the time. Like if you're doing something, like if you're practicing them something with them and they look at you to see if they did it every right. Time, like like they, sometimes you'll see kids like look at their parents and the parents like, okay, go, you, you're fine. Go, like they do it as a means of reassurance. So it, it's just really annoying. I don't know, I, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. I've said that a lot already, it's annoying. So basically Anthony comes in and feels that Billy's not the right manager for Asia. They don't even know what venue Asia's performing at. And he's basically saying like, yo, how can you be a good manager if we don't even know where she's performing? This is really irresponsible. They then get to the venue. So Asia, Christy and Sean get to the venue and they see that it's a bar. It's small, there's alcohol, and Sean doesn't feel right about his eight-year-old performing there, but he allows it because he doesn't want the screw-ups of the manager, who's Billy, to affect Asia's career. So he literally has his eight-year-old child performing at a bar with all these mature adults, all this smoking, all this sketchiness going on, alcohol, and he allows it anyway, which, again, Sean, I think, is level-headed a lot of the time, but he has his moments throughout the show where he just loses all judgment. I could not imagine having my eight-year-old perform in that kind of environment. And I just think it's, it, I don't know, again, it just, it wasn't this dramatic, but it gives me like Michael Jackson where they would perform at like strip clubs and they would perform at like all these really sketchy places for a child. It's just, you care more about the career than the safety of your kid. Asia then sees gum on the stage. She feels that the stage is uneven. Anthony freaks out. Sean says she's a performer, so she'll go out and kill it regardless. And then um, Sean really doesn't like the idea about the red carpet or the venue. And it's not his idea of where the next Beyonce should be. So again, Sean is kind of going on the whole Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce thing. And he's like, oh, I don't like this, but he still has her do it anyway. Very different audience here at this red carpet. It looks very strange to me. Hey, how's it going? This is Crystal from Teen Infonet. I'm here with Asia Monet Ray. This is not my idea for where the next Beyonce should be appearing at. But Billy committed Asia to this venue and this performance. So I'm gonna stick this out. Asia then has to get ready in the parking lot because the bar is 21 and over. So the fact that she has to do that says it all. The fact that she has to get ready in the parking lot because she's not 21 says it all. A child should not be here. Why did anyone not think about like the, the safety of Asia? Like that's insane. Like that says it all. Y'all are like, 
Come on, am I am I tripping? I, I, I can't be, I can't be. Anthony then gets upset about the situation and then Christy gets defensive and Sean overrides Christy by saying she's emotional and needs to calm down. And then Christy surprisingly concedes because she doesn't want to end up with a broken family. So Christy realizes that if her and Sean keep butting heads, she doesn't want to cause any more drama. So, you know, that's kind of how the episode ends. Anthony's just really pissed off and that's kind of how that ends. So then episode seven, Asia has a Las Vegas performance at Planet Hollywood. And it's her first time singing and dancing at the same time while dancing with the cube in the air. So Gina, Christy's sister and Asia's aunt, is a little concerned about her going out and singing and dancing at the same time. And Christy just wants Gina to sit back and be the aunt. So again, a lot of people in this show, they kind of want to take on other roles. Um, but I think Gina's just being a concerned aunt. So I think it's an annoying that Christy just kind of overrides her and says, yo, just be the aunt. Like, we don't need your opinion here. You're dancing? No problem. But singing, I, I think she honestly needs a little bit more time. I don't think Gina realizes that Asia wants to perform. Billy, myself, Sean, or Anthony would never put Asia out there if they didn't think she was ready. Gina needs to just sit back and be the aunt. So then they're leaving for this Las Vegas performance. So Gina, Christy, Asia, Sean are all leaving. And then Bella tries to follow them in her little pink car that she got for her birthday, which was really cute. So she tries to like follow them. While on their way to Vegas, this is one of the, I won't say it's a meltdown, but I guess it's one of the most, I guess the most, like where we see Asia get really frustrated. A situation happens where Asia wanted another drink besides water while on the way. And basically she wasn't allowed to drink anything else. Christy said, you're not allowed to have dairy. You're not allowed to, have, allowed to have caffeine. And Christy is super controlling about it. Although I do understand why she doesn't want Asia who's young to have caffeine. Like she could have at least had a decaf though. Like the fact that they made it seem like Asia was being a brat. She was only eight years old. She was only eight years old. All she wanted was something else other than water. So I can fully understand like, granted I haven't been eight for a very long time almost 20 years, gosh. But like, I fully remember like being, I remember actually a time where my parents had an argument in Burger King because I wanted coffee. My mom was cool with it, my dad was not. They had a whole argument in the middle of Burger King about whether I should have coffee or not. So I kind of I kind of can relate, but yeah. So it, it was just, it was really sad to see Asia just so angry. She's like, all I wanted was some coffee, was some, I think, something other than water and it's such a big deal and da 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 da. So. Again, the way Christy handled that was just terrible. Um, could have had anything to drink except water. Well, kids don't have caffeine, sorry. Well, I could have had something else, but what you decided. Want? We're still here. What do you want? I asked for a hot chocolate, but uh, uh, I can't have it. dairy and uh, there's nothing else. You kids don't have caffeine. So just so you well, know. Well, I could have had something Only else. Only go and tell daddy to get you something else. Orange juice. You're not having dairy, period. I just wanted something to drink on the way to Las Vegas. Okay, well, guess what? There's tons of things to drink but you're not having caffeine and you're not having dairy. So what part don't you understand? So Sean and Christy then have another conversation about Billy and Sean wants to see how Billy can deliver, but he's worried about the situation between Billy and Anthony. So Billy and Anthony again have two completely different views on how Asia should be handled. And Sean's really concerned about that. He's concerned about how they're going after each other. And then Christy says that she's trying to establish boundaries with Anthony. They're at Planet Hollywood because of Billy. So um, they're kind of trying to come to a common ground or an understanding with that. And then Sean basically is like, look, I'm throwing this guy a rope and I want him to see if he can be a cowboy. I'm throwing you a rope. Now he has to show me that he can be a cowboy. So referring to Billy, like, hey, I'm giving him a chance. He needs to see if he can actually knock it out the park or not. So Sean discusses the issue with the venue in the parking lot and everything like that to Billy. And Billy basically says, who cares if it was, um, you know, in this venue where these 30 people, all of these people know Asia. So he was kind of being a bit disregarding or flippant with it. This was like a bar, um, you know, people were in there drinking. Uh, they ushered her in, they ran her out. I mean, it really wasn't a place for an eight year old kid. That wasn't the spot for a red carpet. Now there might've been 30 people in there, but guess what? All of those people know Asia. It's simple math, two plus two is eight in show business. And then they talk about the cube contraption that Asia is supposed to perform with for this performance. And he pulls it from the routine because he doesn't feel comfortable with it and he doesn't feel it's safe for Asia. And they just wanna have Asia sing and dance. So then Anthony then questions if the routine will be good and then Billy steps in. You gotta trust me. You I just said to I trust mean, him. I, I trust yeah. you. Yeah. I trust you, Billy. So my, my point is, is that I'm trying to figure out what, if it doesn't work. It's gonna work. It doesn't work. Because, because we've been doing this for 35 years. That's why I can understand that. Why don't you think I trust you? When I was sick, 
and you start yelling on the phone, really put the, disrespectfully. Put the, put the, Don't yeah, be combative yeah, with me, though. And, and I found this, this confrontation really weird because it's like, I feel like Billy just gets so defensive and hostile. He did the same thing with Sean where someone is asking him like a simple question and he feels like they're questioning his freaking expertise, his authority and his everything. And that really, really, really bothers me. It's like he asked just a simple question. Like he wasn't trying to undermine your authority or your expertise. And it just becomes this big, big thing. He's just so off-putting and confrontational. And then Sean feels like Anthony's opinion in this situation isn't needed. But again, I sympathize with him because they decided to pull, you know, his choreography that like with the cube and i can understand feeling frustrated because it's like this is my vision this is my work and you're pulling it so while i understand um anthony kind of being too much at times i also can understand the frustration because it's like this is my work that you're messing with anthony then says he feels like he wasted his time coming to vegas because he feels like no one wants his opinion so that is basically raising asia episodes one through seven I will break down episodes 8 through 14 in the next video, but I thank you guys so much for watching this. I didn't want this video to be too long, but I really hope you enjoyed this kind of breakdown and I'll see you in part two. Bye!